Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another message from Fountain Springs Church. My name is Kevin, and I'm on staff at FSC. I'm glad you're joining not just me, but our in-person and online locations worshiping God together. Today, we are going to hear last week's message from one of our pastors. And spoiler alert, it's been shortened a bit to be broadcasted here on your screen. If you want to listen to the whole message, go to our website at messages.fs.church to listen to it all. Again, we are glad you're joining us. I want to ask you a question. It's very simple, but I think it's significant. Uh, how trusting of a person are you? And now, you might at first go, not at all. Or some of us jump to the far conclusion of, oh, I'm super trusting. I, I may be overly trusting. Uh, to help, let, let me give you a definition of uh, the trust or trusting. This is, I think, profound by Charles Feltman. Trust is choosing to make something important to you, vulnerable to the actions of someone or something else. So think about this. When I ask you how trusting are you, how willing are you to make yourself vulnerable to the actions of someone or something else? Now, when I ask this, I'm starting to immediately think, so who are the trusting people that I know and, and what do they do? And I think uh, specifically about, I might call them nut jobs or maybe really experienced awesome people who climb rocks in the Black Hills. It's one of the main things, lo people love going outdoors to not just see things, but to actually experience the Black Hills. So I thought, let's ask someone who climbs giant rocks and hangs off of them, that person, I want to ask, how do you trust people and things so well? Hey, Josh, I wanted to talk to you about, because what you do is, from my vantage point, borderline nuts. It's fine. I know it's adventure and fun, but... Like you literally get on to rocks, climb up them, climb back down them. And I'm thinking you're using lots of stuff that I don't even know the names for, but I, there's rope involved and then there's other things. And so I want to talk to you about trust because it's, I know you well enough to know you're highly intelligent. Um, you have a family now, so you're not like doing this stuff without thinking through stuff. Like I know you're not just like careless and, and carefree, like you've got thoughts. So. Talk to me, someone who knows nothing about climbing, and likely will never climb ever in my entire life, but, the, uh, but what do you do to like increase your level of trust? Like you're doing stuff to just, and I'm a beginner, so speak yeah. in small words. Yeah, so I think for one of the biggest things that helps with being confident while climbing is just doing the research yourself. Okay. Um, so I've taken, a couple of classes um, with a local company, but also okay. done tons of research on my own and um, learning, you know, angles and what, how much force is going into okay. um, the rock, how much force is on the rope, how much, um, how much weight each of these things can hold. There's a lot of different factors that just knowing a lot more about it kind of helps to ease the mind, but also finding someone that's, you know, a someone I've been climbing with for a long time is someone that really helps me to be able to trust while I'm on the rocks. Okay, so so tell me, so, uh, I mean, did you buy this at Lowe's? I mean, like, what what is this? <laughs> is, is there any significance to this rope that's different than a normal rope? Um, yeah, there's a few a few things that I like about this rope. It's a 9.8 millimeter rope. So basically that just means it's thicker than your normal rope. Okay, um, all right. It's fairly average, but a little bit more on the thicker side which just means it's going to last longer. Um, it's a little bit heavier when you're climbing, but okay. it's going to last longer. 70 meters long, so that means you can climb really tall stuff okay. um, pretty easily because you can get back down because your rope will still reach the ground. Okay. Um, and not didn't buy it at Lowe's. Okay, okay. That's <laughs> a, I figured you didn't, but again. Uh, and so there's rope involved. Tell me other things that you're trusting, that, that you're, you've done research, rope, yep. what else? Yeah, um, there's quite a few different um, pieces of gear that you use, but one of the more um, important ones that you use is a belay device. Um, so that's 
that's kind of what you thread your rope through when you're going to repel. Um, and that kind of helps you to be able to lower yourself down without having to carry your entire body weight. It kind of takes most of that force on that device. Okay. Uh, so, so I'm guessing you're trusting this. I'm just thinking you said control coming down control. That'd be fascinating. Uh, okay. So that's important. Yeah. Uh, what else? Some, uh, some other ones are, you know, using a, a big uh, sling. So this is something that you can thread through, um, the rock at the top. So this kind of takes a lot of force, um, okay. but you can build your own little anchor. Um, you can redirect it to a few different pieces of gear. The more pieces of gear you have, the more weight that all those pieces are taking. So, okay. um, that's another big one. Um, quick draws are kind of what you use to attach the rope to the wall um, so when you fall you know you're not falling all the way back down to the ground you fall to wherever that last piece of gear was at so a quick draw or a cam or a nut any of those kind of pieces of gear okay. so when you fall that's fascinating no don't fall you're not uh, trying hard enough I oh, guess, so. <laughs> okay because that's like so for someone like me who's, who's never really done it i'm thinking uh how strong is the rope if i fall what's this rope connected to so if, I don't know if you can even remember the first couple of times you climbed mm -hmm. compared to now. Uh, what what were your emotions like the first couple of times climbing yeah. compared to now? Yeah, so climbing can, uh, it can be a very physical sport, but okay. more so, or maybe just the same amount, it's a mental sport. Okay. So, you know, when you first start out, it's, it's hard to keep your mental, everything in your body is telling you like, you shouldn't be here. Okay. okay. Um, you know, hundred feet in the air or plus it's, you shouldn't, people aren't supposed to be there really, okay. you know? So once you can kind of control the mind a little bit more and it helps you, you're not uh, over gripping so much. So your muscles stay okay. fresh and you're not burned out so quick. Um, and also you can just keep your, keep your head together and not just flip out. So <laughs> see, that's what's fascinating. Cause so, so from someone like like me, there's an assumption that you had just had the same level of trust and know-how at the beginning as you do now, but it seems like you've learned how along the way. Yeah, I mean, all the all the training I've done physically, I've also had to do mentally. And okay. a lot of that comes just from going climbing more and getting comfortable being at such heights, but um, yeah. It's profound because I, I I think there's an assumption that some people just trust and some people don't. And you either got it when you were born or you didn't. Mm. But the way you talk about this is in theory, someone could start off and along the way, as they learn and learn and experience and experience, that understand that that mental game gets stronger because you're aware of what's really going on and what needs to be done. There's like yeah. growth happening. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the more understanding you have of of climbing, the more comfortable you can be while climbing. Um, okay. I think it's kind of the underlying factor. So, That's incredible. Thanks for letting me ask you questions. Yeah, no problem. Um, you're not near as a nut job as I thought you were. <laughs> <laughs>
that doesn't do a whole lot. Um, in fact, I don't know where you're at right now with God, but I wonder, I wonder if you currently believe in God, but struggle to trust God. I think, I think that's something that you and I ought to talk about. In fact, I would say that many of us right now, many of us believe in the existence of the almighty God. We believe, well, yes, this world was made by him. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. But we believe in a God that we don't necessarily trust. And I think this is a worthwhile problem for you and I to solve. What if you could not only believe in the existence of God, but you could trust him with your entire heart spending the rest of your life letting him lead you in a way that your heart is fully in it. Now, you don't have to take this leap of trust all by yourself. There's, I, I'm not going to invite you into some mental uh, Olympics where you figured this out on your own. You just got to trust harder and all that. Actually, what I can do is let me talk to you a little bit about what Jesus taught. And then out of that, you and I can learn how to actually grow some trust here. Uh, in, in John chapter 6, verse 27 and on, don't be so concerned about perishable things like food. Spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the Son of Man can give you. For God the Father has given me the seal of his approval. So this is Jesus saying, hey, don't be concerned about all the perishable stuff, the stuff that you and I have a hard time, frankly, trusting about. Here, they replied to, to this response. We want to perform God's works too. What should we do? And this is what I'm trying to guard you against. You want to trust. Well, we begin to think, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Look at Jesus's response. I think this is profound. Jesus told them, this is the only work God wants from you. Here you go. Believe in the one he has sent. Believe in the one. I know I've been talking to you about believe in, trust, believe in. If you don't know what believe in means in this context, the original language, language said, um, put confidence in. If you want to trust God, not just believe in his existence, consider that you put confidence in him. And, and just like we know, that grows, confidence grows. In fact, let me take you back to Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, but he keeps talking here. And do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. This is practical thinking. Uh, do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your straight paths. He will make your path straight. I hope you can connect this because if you want a practical first step on how do you trust the God that you believe in, do something about what you do about your understanding. When you lack under, when, when you lack the information, the details, the solution, the cure, when you lack the resolution to compensation or what, how to raise your kids, you're like, I don't know what to do. This is so frustrating. I just, how do I trust God in this? Step one is don't lean on your own understanding. Understand in the moment you don't understand everything. And that is your first step on trusting God, recognizing you don't know all that you need to know. Let's talk about how you are actually fulfilling your lack of understanding. If you do what I do, uh, when you don't understand something or don't know something, we Google it. I mean, it's second like nature. It's a word now. Like, did you Google it? Basically means, did you look on the internet for the information that you need? The problem is you and I want trust and we often will use a vehicle like Google to try to find it and it's not working. Uh, we find ourselves still lacking in the full understanding. It's a relational aspect of trust that we don't have. We're trying to figure everything out on our own and we lack the view that we're desperately wanting. Uh, also makes me think about our dog. So uh, in my family, it's worked out to where one of my morning chores is to get the dog, let the dog out, and I put the dog on a leash so the dog can do its business, go outside, have some fun. And so I do. I let the dog out. And if it's cold, I don't hang out there for a little bit. I just kind of wait for him to, to bark. But inevitably, almost every time, and it's so annoying, he'll go out 
he'll spin himself around a rock or around some root or something, and I hear him barking, I go outside, and he's stuck. It's so stinking obvious. All he's got to do is move himself around a little bit. This is not hard. And walk himself, and then he's totally free. The line is no longer caught on anything. He can come on inside the house, have some food, warmth. It'll be amazing. But a little, a little rock has him all caught up. And he looks at me like I'm his solution. I look at him like, come on, dog. This is you and I in life. We don't have the view that we want to have the trust we desperately want. So with God, we want to believe in God and trust God, but we want God and our way. We want God and our own tricks. We want God and we want our horoscope. We want God and our best friend's advice. And we struggle just letting God deal with our lack of understanding and lead us down a path that we might be uncomfortable in. But since we don't have the view, we need him to take us along the way. So we want both and, right? We're talking about, I, I want the life I want. I want God. I want this. I want that. I think you and I can go to a moment Jesus had with his disciples. I think you and I can go to a moment where Jesus is talking to his disciples and he's trying to teach them what I'm sharing with you about trust. Here, so he's picking his disciples and, and this is in Luke 5. Uh, I'll start with verse 4. When, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Now, if you're new to the Bible, a rabbi, a non-fisherman, just gave fishermen, professional fishermen, some fishing advice. Just when I talk to you about not leaning on your own understanding, you and I have a tendency to go to the professional about everything. When sometimes God's like, I just want you to come to me. When he finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. Now, come on. When you look at what God wants us to do, sometimes we know the answer. It's not trust. It's not like, uh, I don't know where to go or what to do. They're, they're saying, we've worked hard, Jesus. We've been doing what we know to do. And your way seems weird. Like, it doesn't even make sense. But the response is profound. The response is, but because you say so, because you say so, when, when Jesus taught to pray, if, if you don't know this, the Lord's Prayer, it's, it tells us so much about Jesus where uh, we're supposed to pray in such a way that we're praying, God, I want your will done, not mine. I, I, your agenda, what you know, what you think is best, I want to actually accomplish that, which helps you and I understand something. Um, if you look at because you say so, it tells you that you don't have to understand completely in order to obey immediately. You don't have to understand life absolutely completely. You don't have to know why you're doing what you're doing simply because you have all the answers. It's an act of obedience. If you want to trust God, you look into God's word. What does God say? What does God think is best? And rather say, well, that makes sense or that's too tough or that's an issue. You say, God said so. In this moment where Jesus tells them to cast their nets out, so they do so. And I'm just going to tell you, uh, it went real well for them. <laughs> so for you, you don't have to understand completely in order to obey immediately. Perhaps you know how to trust God. Let me challenge you to trust him by obeying him now instead of delaying it. So I wanted to share a couple of things because frankly, I can't make you trust God. I can't make you believe in him in the first place, but I know some of you have already gone over that hurdle is you, are, you believe in him and you wanna trust him. And so you probably hopefully by now are thinking, so how do I click over to that? I wanna click over to I trust God. Well, I don't think any kind of relationship functions that way. 
Uh, but what I can tell you is I, I wrote a couple prayers. And I think, I think you, if you want to trust them, consider doing this with the rest of your entire year. Uh, here's, here's prayer number one. God, help me obey even when I don't understand. God, help me obey even when I don't understand. I can tell you uh, multiple personal stories in my life. I've shared with you openly, and my son has given me permission to share with you that Hayden has a, a speech block that makes it difficult in the midst of conversation sometimes for him. And he and I have had very honest conversations where he was frustrated. He didn't understand why he has to face this. Or I've told you about my own mom. My mom is uh, battling cancer, and she... Uh, she doesn't know on a yearly basis how the prognosis is gonna be, will it change? She doesn't understand the whole thing and neither do any of us as family members. I think a prayer like God, help me obey, help me listen, even when I don't understand, that kind of a conversation with God lets him know you can actually begin to trust him and build this trust. Here's another one. God, help me surrender what I cannot control. I think similar in the vein of me sharing you with, with Hayden and, and my mom. God, help me surrender what I cannot control. Trust can go stronger in the midst of frustration. Isn't that what happened? I mean, maybe some of you right now are frustrated. You're frustrated with God. Do you know that frustration with another individual is a sign that you care about that individual? So with God, if you're frustrated with God, that's okay. Pray, God, help me surrender what I cannot control. These two prayers, I think, are worth your time. In fact, I would tell you to spend the rest of the year, like, as you cling to God uh, and you're dating and you're going, I wanna find my spouse, as you cling to God as a parent, uh, as at your workplace, as you look at the uncertain future, as you cling to God, he's like, I really wanna trust you, I wanna trust you. I wanna do more than just believe in the existence. It's prayers like this that help us lead there. So let me give you some homework and then I wanna pray with you. The homework is, that hopefully you might even be watching this with some other people. I'd like you to start off talking about where we started. How trusting are you? And I'd like for you to speak in reference to God. Does God have to do everything that you want him to do in order for you to trust him? Or maybe you've got an understanding that's lacking and you know he's got it so you can trust him. My prayer for you, in fact, our word for the year as a church is gonna be trust. But my prayer for you is that you'll be willing to walk the journey with God so that there comes a point where you can say, I don't always like what he does, I don't always know what he's doing, but I trust him. Uh, let me conclude our time. I wanna pray for you because I think we need to go to God for him to build our trust. So let me pray, God, uh, for anyone and everyone listening who genuinely wants a desire to trust you, they got big decisions, they got monumental moments coming. God, in the name of Jesus, would you give them the wisdom and discernment that they need? For those who are seeking out, like, what do they do? How do they do it? And who they do it with? God, would you, this whole entire year, remind us and prompt us and lead us to not lean on our own understanding, to actually trust you and to be all about you. God, help us that when we can't control stuff, when we know it's bigger than us, when we have all this uncertainty, God, speak into our lives, walk with us, hold our hand at moments that we desperately need you to, to lead us to where there's a moment and then it goes more that we trust you with our whole heart. We want to. We love you, God. Thanks for meeting us exactly where we're at over and over and over. Pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Wait, 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 wait. I, I know I prayed and said amen, and that's typically like, hey, we're done. But I kind of felt like I was treating you unfairly. I'm telling you to trust God. Don't lean on your own understanding and all that kind of stuff. But maybe I should do something. And so... I've got incredible people around me who have semi-tricked me into this or coerced me, whatever. But if you don't know this about me, I am deathly afraid of heights. Like paralyzed, I don't like to look over the edge of a balcony kind of heights. So uh, I think it'd be unfair for me to tell you to trust without me at least experimenting with this. So if you think this is fake, it is not fake. Uh, I'm gonna climb. Uh, Mount Everest, right? Okay, it's not Mount Everest, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna climb and we'll, we'll, we'll see how this works. So, um, yeah. I'm gonna put you on on this side. And when I say on the lay, you can say that you're climbing and then okay. I'll tell you to climb on. Okay. 
and I just start climbing. Yeah, and then you're good to go. So. Just up the rock. Yeah. <laughs> so you're on the way. Uh, climbing. Climb on. All right. <laughs> This feels produced, but I assure you, I wasn't watching you close enough to know what to do. Yep, that's perfect. Use those toes on the, those shoes. That's the best spot on the shoe to use. Very tippy toe. What? <laughs> that's... That's what you would call the crux. That would be like the hardest part right there, but I do I think- I thought I'd already passed the crux. <laughs> no, but what it means is there's, if you get past this, the rest is way easier. Holy cow. I think I might be done. Yeah, I don't think I have it. Give it two more tries. All right. Nice. Yep. Nice. That was it. Smooth sailing from here. All right, now what? Take in the view. What? Take in the view. I'm good. <laughs> I'm ready to come down. All right. Awesome. <laughs> Holy cow. Good work. That is. Crushed it. <laughs> the amount of times that I wanted to quit, I mean, I lost track. My forearms were wasted. Okay. All right. Hey, uh, your turn. You figure out how to trust. We're so glad you tuned in today. Fountain Springs Church is located in the Black Hills of South Dakota, but our community reaches beyond our neighborhoods and spreads around the whole world. Our website is a great way to give, get involved, and get connected. If you appreciate our ministry and want to be part of our mission to show people who Jesus is, here's what I'd recommend. Join us financially. When you do that, you're giving other people the opportunity to hear what you just heard. So here's a way to do that. Visit our website at fs.church give. And thank you so much for being with us today. And let's do our best this week to show people who Jesus is.